Welcome to my channel. My name is Sully, and I'm going to show you how to uh, install can Kangaroo, Pollard's Kangaroo. Let's see, we're going to actually be doing this guy. It's J. Oh, my, my mic is glitching out. A E A N L U C P O N S. This guy is a wizard, and he made a program to try to free course against public keys and here it is this is github John luck ponds kangaroo we're going to be installing this on a vast.ai instance it's pretty easy it takes about 10 minutes i'll show you how to do it real quick first thing we're going to need to do is download putty you can do that at putty.org damn my mic is sorry uh, got so many electronics in here got a lot of interference <sighs> anyways okay so you want to install putty once you do that it comes with another program called putty gen and uh, we're about to use that you also want to install win scp and uh, I highly recommend notepad plus plus if you don't have it if you're using Windows uh, anyway so first things first we downloaded putty we're going to actually open putty gen once you do that you're going to generate a key you have to move your mouse around a little bit to make some entropy obviously you guys saw all that but once you do that you can give it a name you name it hmm. Gertie. there we go so now that we have that just uh, select all that copy that for later that is the public key we're going to need to paste that into our vast.ai so that that way we can make an ssh connection so go ahead and save your private key you'll want to put a passcode on that i'm not going to as a matter of fact i'm not actually going to use this one but pretend i clicked yes I'll pretend i saved that so you'll take your public key and then on vast.ai It'll make an account real quick. Just needs an email. I'll put my card on there. Let's see. That was light year. Now, uh, now that I'm in here, you'll want to go to your account and to change SSH key, you'll actually want to paste in your public key right there and then hit set SSH key. Make sure you have that private key saved on your computer somewhere safe as well. Once you're done doing that, you'll go to create. Now this is vital. You're going to want to go to edit image and configuration. Make sure you selected NVIDIA CUDA and 11.2.0 CUDA and N8 developer and that's uh, 18.4 Ubuntu. You want to run that as an interactive cell sh shell server. Oh, say that 10 times fast. Select it and with plenty of memory. Let's just do an example real quick with uh, eight GPU so we can get a little bit of oomph. And I don't mind using the unverified because there's nothing sensitive we're doing here. Unless we actually uh, hit, but we'll see. So now let's go with some 3090s. There are eight RTX 3090s for a little pricey, but 128 cores. We'll rent that real quick. Rent that bad boy. Oh, here we go. This will take usually a few minutes if it's unverified. It seems to go faster with the verified ones, but I don't know. I'm not sure. Full complete. Cool, cool, cool. We're almost done here. I guess while this is uh, pulling, you should make sure to install WinSCP. Make sure you got all that set up. Now we wait.
got the docker.io image thing. Success. Wow, hey, that wasn't so slow. Cool. So now this is pretty easy. We'll go to connect and see that 23259 right there. That's your port number. 23259. And we're going to go to buddy. I'm going to open up the one I've got and load that. You'll be making a new one, so you'll type it in the root at ssh4 at fast dot fast dot ai port number two five nine. I'm going to save that now. Keep in mind, you will have to go into SSH here, expand that, go to auth, click that, and you're going to want to set the file location to the private key file that you saved. So connect that in right there. You want to scroll back up to session and save that so you don't have to do it again. Then you can hit open. While that's going, we're going to get WinSCP rocking real quick. Oh man, I already forget it. Okay. Two three two five nine. Two three two five nine. And it's a four. SSH four. And we'll save that. You will be doing actually the same thing, so I'll show you real quick. In advanced. And no oh wait. Uh, anyways, yeah, you'll wanna put your key in there as well. And then uh, What's going on here? No, it needs to be SFTP. What's going on here? Oh, please disregard that for just one second, guys. I don't know what happened there, but two, we need to make, make sure it's uh, SHFTP. So, two, three, two, five. Two three two five nine. There we go. Make sure it's SFT. Save that. Log in. There we go. My apologies. Okay. So now we can see we'll be in a visual representation of the file system on the Ubuntu device that we are currently renting. Right now there's nothing in the file structure. So we're going to go here to uh, the terminal. And I got this handy little notepad right here. So uh, just stay with me. First thing we're going to do is at up. Oh, <laughs> there we go. At update. You can pretty much do this verbatim, guys. Takes a little longer. I love the internet and YouTube. Ha uh ha. -huh. This is nice. Uh, Forty four percent done. Well on our way. Well on our way. Oh man. All right. Apt. Install. Oh. You want Git? It's a good one. That one helps you get stuff off the internet. I'll show you here in a second. And we're gonna wanna apt install make. That's gonna make the thing that we're gonna want to use. Oh, it's already at it. Nice. And nano. There we go. Now we're gonna just make a directory real quick. We do that by typing mkdir. We'll call it btc. Why not? Then we'll go into that by typing cd as in change directory btc. There we go. 
now that we're in there, we're going to type git clone. And we're actually going to copy paste the URL from GitHub. Right. There we go. And paste. Now that we have enumerated that, <laughs> we will type CD capital K A G A R O L. Now we are in that directory. Now that we are in the directory, we're going to edit the make file. We do that simply by typing N A N O capital M A K E F I L E. Enter. Now that we have this opened up, we're going to edit the uh, path for the CUDA and the compiler for the CUDA. We'll do that by removing these last few characters here. And that will make it compatible with our system. Control O and enter and Control X. It's been written. Now that we're done with that, we're going to do it, or we're going to actually compile it. Now we want to set the computing capability to 86 for the 3090, but you'll have to check on NVIDIA's website to see the CCAP, CCAP. One second. There we go. Copy that, and this will compile our program with the GPUs. Let's see how this goes. <clears throat> Shouldn't take too long. All right. Now let's give it a test real quick. You can do that by just simply typing minus L to list the devices. So it's showing that it has eight. All right. Now, the uh, file system should be quite different than when we last saw it. So we'll refresh this real quick. Go into the Bitcoin folder that we created and the one we downloaded called Kangaroo. Now, as you can see here, there is an in.txt. It currently has a very small key space with a very easy to solve public key that it's targeting. That'll let us know that everything's working functionally. So what we're going to do now is take, let's see, this command right here, modify it so that it accepts eight GPUs. We do that by doing this. There we go. Now, this is also set to save work every 3,000 seconds. I find that longer intervals is better, especially if you uh, use a lot of resources or have like a lot of GPUs going it slows them all down every time it saves. So copy that. And here's our test run. Wait. Oh, I accidentally didn't copy paste that. Sorry. There we go. Scared me for a second. Now we have 40 cores on this rental device right now. And 8 RTX 3090s. It'll take a little bit. It's actually... Uh, it. it determines its own grid size. You can do it manually as well if you like, but uh, I find it does a better job. I've tried playing around and not got as good results. Now, we're throwing a little bit too much into too small of a key space, so we're going to have a lot of uh, lost DP points and stuff, I think, or whatever you call it. Uh, Alright. Coming along. Almost done here. See, look, oh, while this is happening, let's go in real quick, and you can see in the files we downloaded, there's a puzzle 32. You can open that. It has uh, some of the unsolved puzzles, such as number 120, which is uh, quite the task. But if you want to try it, you can just simply copy that right there. Open this. And if you have an idea of target key space, like a range, if you're aware of uh, some entropy patterns or something, and you have some public keys, you can input them right here. Maybe select all. And paste. Perfect. 
save that. When you save it, you want to make sure it sends it back over to the other device. So that, there we go, complete. Always make sure it does. Sometimes it messes up. Now this is this is going slow. I've actually never seen it go so slow. Usually it zips through this test. Let's give it another minute. Seriously. So slow. There we go. Got it. Alright. Okay, okie dokie. Sorry, I'm so sorry. My microphone is really glitching out right now. Anyways, see that? It uh, gave us the private key. And uh, you can check that. But uh, since it's done with all that, we can uh, now run it again. And it will use our newly input parameters. Right? Oh, there we go. Should we paste it there? And it'll give us a time estimation on 2 to the 120th power, which is unfathomably large. Uh, but going up against public keys, it, it's a lot easier than going against like anything else. Uh, you can go and recreate base 58 addresses, but like Bitcrack and all that, uh, where there was, there's no chance. But if, if you want to know how to do big cracks, it's pretty easy. Wait, it's actually a little easier than this. Let's see how this all goes. Give us a time estimation. It went from 1.8 years to 3 years. It's going to keep going up, I think. We're getting 17,000 million keys, 18,000 million keys. Uh, now, this program can actually be set up to run on multiple instances at the same time and controlled by another. Uh, maybe we can get to that next. But uh, it's pretty late. I gotta go to bed. Anyways. Uh, I just wanted to make this because I didn't see anybody explaining how to do it, and it's pretty easy. So, best luck. Hopefully, I'll find something. I'm gonna end this now. Whoops. Shut that down. And, uh. Cool thing about this, if you mess up, you can always just destroy it. There you go. Get no pet plus plus.